people want to know. The people want to know. Okay. When are you going to shave your beard so that you can get the perfect seal? I think headphones should just be designed for people with beards. I think that's just how all headphones should be designed. If it doesn't do well with beards, then it's a flawed headphone, in my opinion. There you go. That's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm here at the headphones.com office. And we have the Sennheiser HE1 $60,000 electrostatic headphone system. And we are going to measure it on the B&K 5128. And yes, we're also going to measure it on the little gross over there too. So this should be a lot of fun. First though, I'm going to listen to it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see what $60,000 sounds like. Is it going to make me cry? Ooh, cool. So like the plug just connects into the base like that. All right, this does feel. All right, okay, that feels pretty, pretty soft. I don't know if the way you're the top that. piece is kind of like the, the um, HD 100s. I'm curious what material this is, because it doesn't feel like plastic. It feels like really solid, maybe magnesium. Interesting. All right, let's see if it can fit the giant audio file head. Oh, that's really comfortable. <laughs> Okay. I don't think crossfeed is that low as well. Oh, so. turn off. Crossfeed off? Yeah. Get out of here. The bass is something. All right. First impression. It's got bass. <laughs> well, it's not bassy. It's like more bass than I would have expected for an electrostatic headphone. And like a lot of high-end headphones, they end up being like more treble focused. But it sounds like really even keel. Like it sounds, you know, like it has, it's an electrostatic headphone with a much more balanced sound signature than what I normally sort of associate with electrostatics. You'll have to Photoshop Kobas onto the screen. <laughs> I mean, Spotify is fine. You heard it here first. I'm going to dump <laughs> Kobas into your mouth there. All right. You can't even use flack. You have to use like pure... Dot wavs. No, 24 bit, 96K. Vinyl rip, dot wav. <laughs> yeah, so this is the most comfortable headphone that I've worn so far. It is, I do find it more comfortable than the Aperio for my giant audiophile head. I think the Aperio clamps a little bit more than this one. Um, but they're both reasonably lightweight. This one's maybe heavy. I don't know. I need to have them side by side. So I'm not going to cry. <laughs> These don't make me cry. They make me excited for what's possible with sound and headphones. But let's measure them. Let us. You're going to be in multiple different frame angles as my arms get tired and I uh, adjust. That's okay. The laziest positions possible. That's okay. I will just I'll put a little note in there. Blame Taryn, the camera guy. Yes. Wait. What, what are your impressions of the of the HE1? Where the Aperio is different is that it doesn't sound as much like an Estat. Where's the HE1? Still kind of has that ethereal, like, airy... It's definitely got a, an extra um, extra treble as well, like airy kind of treble. Yeah. I hear that. I heard the DAC in the HE1 is not that good, though. So we should grab the <laughs> DCS uh, Lena and bring it out here. No, man, Apple dongle. We'll use the Apple dongle as the DAC, and we'll hook it up to the, H, or to the HE1, right? And then people will be happy. That's true. <laughs> Do you want to come a little closer here? Absolutely not. But I should. You're our new cinematographer. No, the HE1's in the way. Well, whatever. He wants the star of the show. The, sh the pads are kind of a little on the shallow side, so I want to make sure that it doesn't touch the ear. Okay. And so. I just wanted to test the distortion here because I noticed that on all of these tests that I've done, oops, that's going to be annoying. The, the distortion is real low. Like the harmonic distortion is real low. Not that it, it would be audible even if it was significantly higher, but I wanted to test at a higher level. So I'm testing here now at 114 dB, which is unbelievably loud. That's how you damage your hearing. But this is oftentimes what you do if you want to, like, see what the distortion looks like if you boost it to its absolute limits. Um, because otherwise it's really difficult to actually read the distortion. 
And so let's let's just measure this. So that's real high up there. Basically nothing. I can't remember the last time I saw a headphone that was this low on distortion. Is that even gonna show up properly? Maybe. Mm -hmm. At 114 dB. So if you wanted to, you could EQ the shit out of this. I'm gonna turn it down and see what the crossfeed function does. Oh yeah, wow. 100%. So it's way less bass with crossfeed high. high yeah. yeah. Yeah, I noticed Did you notice that? that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, everything else matches and right at around like 500 hertz, maybe just a little above 500 hertz, it dips down. I mean, is this, there's, there's definitely other stuff going on here too though. You could use the remote and you wouldn't have to even touch those knobs. Yeah, but I mean, if I were to use the remote, how would I assess knob feel? Life is all about knob feel. If I had a bumper sticker. Okay, so now we have it on the 5128. Now let's see how it measures on the grass, because that is effectively another head. And we'll be able to see how things are different. So we're now measuring on the grass uh, 43 AG. This is two grass 43 AGs mounted on an upright fixture. And the reason for this is to see kind of how it may vary depending on the head that it's on. So what we'll do is we'll show this relative to diffuse field head related transfer function with a 10 decibel slope for both um, and see how that goes. But I'll also show you that against Harman just for the folks who want to see that. So like if you even just like slightly change like the what's inside the pad like if the ear is like slightly bent because mm -hmm. it's touching the pad, it can have a pretty significant effect. But with these, the pads are kind of huge and also like they're very flat. So they don't have that much impact. It sounds pretty good with my, uh, with my esoteric jazz. Mm. Listen to the new Ting Val Trio album. Have you tried it with your EQ? No, because I need to initialize the EQ. What I would do with the EQ is I would kind of drop some of that mid trouble just a little bit. There's a little bit of extra mid trouble there, uh, and then I would I would kind of fill in a little bit around two, like maybe two k, one point five to two k. Um, but that region also has that kind of like like spaciousness enhancement effect that dip there, and you see that with the Hyperman headphones. You see that with the HD hundred S to a certain degree. So if you want to keep that spaciousness that this has. You, you don't really you want to EQ that away, but I probably would maybe just boost it a tiny little bit. Bass is a little boosted, a little bit extra gumption and beef there. Pretty even keel throughout the mids. The upper mids are not too shouty, they're not too forward at 3k. Um, so the vocals don't come across too glary, and it's in part because it's balanced out well by the rest of the treble above it. It is a little bit elevated in the treble, giving that sort of like ethereal thing that you kind of mentioned, that like ethereal kind of nature up top. But it's not like it's sibilant or like, you know, overpowering or has too much of that extra upper treble zing that can be fatiguing. So I'd say maybe just a tiny bit of extra treble and a tiny bit of extra bass for this one. But apart from that, it's pretty darn even keel and uh, sounds pretty damn good, in my opinion. All right, let me, let me see what the difference is with this cross-feed shenanigans. It's pretty subtle. It's not a massive difference. It's, it's a very subtle effect that it sort of brings things forward a little bit and then the bass kind of goes down. Um, it's cool that it includes it, but I don't know if I would need that, you know? What I don't get is there's like no distortion with this headphone, but this is a tube amp. All right, what's a, what's a track that you recommend I listen to? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you have, this is your opportunity. Uh, listen <laughs> to uh, Disco Zombie Italia by Carpenter Brute. <laughs> Okay. Okay, what the hell is this? All right. 
Now this is the kind of music that makes me cry, just for entirely different reasons. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, in order to get the most, you know, the best version of this song, the best experience of listening to this song, you really need to get the Sennheiser HE1. No other headphones do it justice. You know what this is? It's like, as far as the sound quality is concerned, this is nothing crazy standout, like, um, an, it's not a novelty experience. It's not that thing where you're just like, blown away by it in the store. This is like that kind of thing where you, you appreciate it more as time goes on. Doing like extra normal at the, at the highest level is kind of what it's going for. Um, but with that in mind, like I, I don't think this is the most detailed headphone like from an experience standpoint. Like I would, I listen to those Stax L700 and they definitely sound more detailed than this one. Um, they sound more like they have more of that kind of ridiculousness, but they also suffer se like severely in the timbre department and in the like overall tonal balance kind of department. The, the more high end you get, it's often the more you get into esoterica, into the, into the kind of the, the, the realm of craziness. And you see that with all kinds of wild tunings out there. I don't think there's really that much that's, you know, normal, but great, you know? And that, that's kind of why this is such an interesting thing. The Aperio is like kind of the opposite of this in that sense, where it's like not going for normal, it's going for a little bit more of like a affectation or like an affected kind of sound, a little more coloration, but in a way that's like their, their sort of editorial stamp on the whole thing. When it comes to that, I suppose, the, the philosophy of art at the eardrum, one of them is like, you know, art at the eardrum, you know, the, the, the glass should be perfectly transparent. And the other one is like, you know, let's, let's enhance the, let's spike it. That's the analogy I'm gonna give here. <laughs> Um, and depending on which one you want, you know, like if you want that sort of, you know, natural, normal, but amazing kind of thing, that's the HE1. But if you want that thing that is like balls to the wall, batshit, crazy, detail, insanity, that is the, Imper that is the Imperio, in my view. Um, and the HD 600 actually costs more than both. The HD 600 costs more than both? Well, because you gotta buy the source gear to scale it properly. I thought you were gonna say because you have to buy like, you know, 6,000 of them. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, is there anything else that's up there? I mean, Utopia is pretty good. I mean, Utopia for me is kind of like that jack of all trades flagship headphone. It's like the HE1 in that regard, where like. It does everything there, well. There isn't some novelty yeah. that stands out, it just does everything well. It's just different from other flagships, where like one flagship will have extremely good bass, um, you know, another flagship will be extremely detailed, like the old LCD4. Yeah. There's the, the sort of all, all rounder kind of thing. Yeah. And the Utopia does that well. I will say, I I think this is more comfortable than the Utopia. For it's, sure. It's lighter, too. It's, it feels lighter, yeah. I mean, it still feels like it's made of crazy materials. Right. And it's not light. It's like it's like heavier than like the other Sennheiser headphones. But yeah, it's this is very comfortable. So for that reason, I'd probably say this is my top pick. And I do, th I do prefer this over the Aperio for the comfort. Um, but then it's like, with the Aperio, I would... E EQ that, you know, to my heart's content. I would EQ both of these to my heart's content, of course. Would it retain the detail? I mean, I'm not doing crazy stuff in the treble. I'd be EQing more, you know, throughout the mid-range a little bit. And they both have good bass extension, like, and then they both are almost like a little boosted in the bass. So like electrostatic headphones with crazy detail that have a bass boost. Like, I think the Aperio is kind of like the L700 with a sub-bass boost. This one is like, yeah, again, more normal, even keel with a, a little bit of a sub bass boost as well. Okay, that's basically all that I have to say about the HE1. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more coverage of the HE1 and other people trying it who aren't me, who have more interesting things to say. If you want measurements, check them out. Links in the description. Uh, and also on the audio files at whatheadphones.com.